And so, as we look down here on the Tour of Lombardy, the race between Varese and Bergamo in Italy, 258 kilometers or 161 miles, the riders moving away, it's showdown time in the World Cup, and it really is Andre Schmil versus Eric Zabel, the World Cup holder against the World Cup leader. It's going to be a tough one for Eric Zabel though, Phil, because this is certainly not the kind of course that suits him. A very difficult course here around Lecco, around all of the lakes in this area. As we look at the race organiser ready to pull in the flag for what will be a pretty dramatic battle between Eric Zabel and Andre Schmiel. Schmiel showing just a week ago that his form is absolutely perfect, but I'm not sure that this course really is great for him, Phil, because he is a fairly heavy rider. Well, the race underway as we join the action now on the climb here of the Selvio. And in fact, the riders now have got a breakaway going. The funny thing is that this race was in danger of being cancelled because of the terrific floods around northern Italy. But thankfully, the Tour of Lombardy, unlike the other races which were cancelled, like Milan Turin, uh, have this one is going ahead. Well, even the Tour of Piemonte was almost abandoned, was in fact abandoned because of the torrential rain making the conditions exceptionally dangerous. But somehow or another the skies have cleared, it looks dry, and this is turning out to be a pretty impressive start to the final day of the World Cup. The leader, Eric Zabel, Phil, I think is, uh, as far as we know, no longer in the bike race. So he's just hoping that Andre Schmiel doesn't get the points necessary to take out the win. Well, it may so work out. He's absolutely right. On the Schmill is now in the race, but Eric Zabel climbed off his bike. Apparently, we never saw it happen after just 25 kilometers, complaining of feeling unwell, and I'm not surprised at the end of a very long season. So Zabel, who has now travelled down to Bergamo to see the race finish, in the hope that he will still receive the trophy as the new World Cup holder. It will depend on where Schmill finishes. If Schmill is first or second, he'll carry off the trophy. I really can't see that happening. It's going to be a tough one for uh, Andre Schmill to finish in first or second position. Although he is in excellent condition, this is really, I think, a race for the climbers. Men like Francesco Casagrande, who is on the front right now, David Rebelin, who is also in this group, and of course uh, El Cato. Uh, there he is, Michele Bartoli, looking for the win just a week ago in the World Championships, finishing fourth there. And I think a little bit upset about the fact that he wasn't just that little bit closer to the podium. There's Casagrande, the leader of his team, the Vina Calderola team, who's had a great season so far. And being accompanied here by a very select group of riders now, and it looks to me as though this group is deciding the race. This is the chase group here, but already riders dropping off the back on this long climb. The breakaway getting clear, some 60 kilometers from the finish. Vladimiro Belli is the rider at the front in the white jersey from Faso Bortolo. Rode a very good Giro d'Italia. He's been an excellent rider so far this season. Uh, they've got this down as Filippo Casagrande, but in fact it's Francesco Casagrande. <laughs> two brothers racing, both with the same initial. And you can tell it's Francesco because of the large emblazoned tattoo on his left shoulder there. Flicking his elbow, that's uh, asking David Rebelin to come through. This big rider coming forward right now is Niklas Axelsson. Swedish rider, I saw him race a couple of years ago in the Tour de Langkawi. Big strong bike rider at the front of the race. In the other white jersey is Raimundas Rumsas. There's that twitch of the shoulder by Casagrande but no reaction coming from them well, he, he wants tried to it. try and draw them out here because this surely is the move of the race we've got Belly, uh, Rumzas, Massimo Kodal who won his first race as a pro this year and David Rebellin, Stangley is in the action again Michele Bartoli we've seen 
uh, Bietzyberg of Rabobank. This is Nicholas Axelson of Panana Panaria and Francesco Castagrande. Uh, these guys are approximately 30 seconds ahead of what's left of the field. Vladimir Abelli picking up the acceleration there, trying to get himself away over the summit of this climb, but I don't think he's going to break the stranglehold of the rest of this group. Nicholas Axelson quick look through the record books doesn't show any victory since he's been a professional but certainly he's always been pretty close to the front and if I remember correctly a couple of years ago he finished high in the overall rankings at the Giro d'Italia Andre Schmil I think I, I said he must finish first or second to win by my calculations I've just done he in fact must win this race and I think that's a tall order for him now he must get the hundred points to get the victory uh, but he's in the group which is approximately 30 seconds behind so if they can get across, then of course we have a different bike race on our hands. There's still a lot of climbing to go before we come down to the finish in Bergamo though, and I really would be surprised. But who knows, Andre Schmiel is a tough competitor. We saw him attacking even in the final 500 meters of the World Championships, and he would like to run out as the winner of the World Cup for the second year in succession. Eric Zabel, I can't say anything bad about that bike rider, Phil, because he started off his season very early on in January, took his win in Milan San Remo for the third time in four years already with 20,000 kilometers in his legs so riding a full season including the Tour de France with four straight wins in the Olympic Games I think for Zabel it's been a very long season and he deserves a good rest and I'll keep my fingers crossed not that I don't like Andre Schmiel but I would certainly like to see Eric Zabel run out the overall winner of the World Cup and what a season it has been for Germany in general because now we've got the first team inside four minutes for 4,000 meters, which they did at the Olympic Games in Germany in the team pursuit. We've got Jan Ulrich, the world, uh, the Olympic road race champion. And that now we're looking here at Zabel picking up the World Cup, having already won the fourth and record green jersey in the Tour de France. And let's not forget a quick word about Andreas Cloden, who took the bronze medal at the Olympic road race, but was a revelation of the early part of the season, taking out the overall victory in Paris-Nice. None of those riders here at the moment, and this is very much a select group of Italian bike riders here. Looking down second wheel there is Raimondas Rumsas. We've seen uh, Ramundas race a lot in Britain, where he won a stage of the British Pro Tour. That was the Tour of Britain, which is now no longer. We've also uh, clashed with him uh, in the nicest terms. He speaks English, by the way, in the Commonwealth Bank Cycle Classic when we report that race in uh, the October. And he was uh, second overall, I think it was, last year. And he's got a clutch of stage wins there. Pretty impressive in the Vuelta a España this year because he finished fifth in the overall standings. And I was amazed to see the way he climbed, Phil. He was always in the front 10 or 15 riders over the summit of the major passes and he held on to finish in fifth place overall which was a magnificent performance by him having switched across during the last winter season to ride for the Faso Bortolo team the new Italian team run by Giancarlo Ferretti having been a, for a long time a member of the top Polish squad the Moroz team well, we're getting no time checks at all but it has improved on the 30 seconds that's about all we know here you can see why they call this the race of the falling leaves now in the autumnal season here in Italy Italy still looks a beautiful country and the riders are just doing enough to stay away as they run off this mountain taking no chances at all David Rebelin he's got a teammate up here in Gora Stangeli four wins this year for Stangeli only one for Rebelin there's Michele Bartoli going through, champion of Italy, had a very good world championship, but in the end had to be content with his fourth place finish. This and is Axelsson on the front here, big tall Swedish rider, leading them down the descent right now. This is the chasing group, in this group is Andre Schmiel, Schmiel would certainly like to make contact with the front group, but if you look up to the hills away from the valley where we are right now you will know that the Tour of Lombardy is all about climbing it's a very difficult bike race at the end of the season which has been a very long season this year made even longer by the fact that the Olympic Games were in September in Sydney after the Tour of Spain after that the World Championships are now pushing this event almost into the month of November and I have to say that the organizers are certainly very lucky that this event has managed to take place yes I agree yeah you're right about the course it it's fairly flat at 160 kilometers 100 miles and then we go into the little hills the Col de Giello 
uh, which takes them up to 750 meters then where the breakaway slipped away on the Selvino climb that takes them up to almost 3,400 feet and that's where this breakaway got clear and I think they've read it right now we do have a little climb towards the end it's a 5% climb of the Col Aperto and that is only four kilometers from the finish so that's a good springboard for a strong man that's where the big attack will come from the strongest rider in the group to try and get himself away from the rest but this is really uh, a reminiscent of some of the races we've seen so far this season with a lot of big names at the front of the bike race around about nine riders in this group right now and all men who stand a very good chance of winning the odd man out here is Nicholas Axelson, really. He's never won a race as a pro. Turned professional in 1997. He's ridden for a number of teams in those couple of years as well. Palmans, which is a Belgian team, where he started in the Comesses. Then he went over to Italy and rode for Scrigno Navagare. And he's riding for Panaria today. He's sitting there in that breakaway. And he's got a lot of good company around him be interesting to see at the front of the main field just exactly who is chasing because all of the heads of state are here at the moment they're all working very well in this leading group the fact that there are two riders from Faso Bortolo means that they will work pretty well together in this group to try and move themselves off the front although they're not in with much of a chance when it comes down to the sprint towards the end because I think a man like Francesco Casagrande and Michele Bartoli are very likely to be the men who will slip off the front on that final little ascent of the day 166 left town this morning at Varese which surprisingly enough was a few more than started the world championships in France uh, but even so the uh, whittling down very rapidly now and this is the, the leading group of nine the main field is now out to a minute and our cameras don't seem to be amongst the main field at all because we're only receiving pictures of these nine leaders I don't know if that means we've lost a motorcycle camera uh, but we've got a helicopter and ground camera only now up with the leaders uh, but the gap is going up and we've got the benefit of race radio looking at this group now there's the composition Rumsas, Rebelin, Stangeli is in there he's been a major revelation this year we saw him race last year in Australia in the Commonwealth Bank Cycle Classic that's him there in the dark black jersey he's a teammate of David Rebelin he rode very well in the recent world championships for Slovenia and I think a man we'll see an awful lot more of as he moves into his career as a professional cyclist Michele Bartoli second from the back here looking for the big win where's the jersey here as the Italian national champion and Vladimiro Belli second from the back yes just taking a drink and uh, it appears at the moment there's no big effort being put into this at all yet they are going clear of the field the line just uh, cruising uh, gently downhill down the creek on the left there this is Bjatzeberg the Rambo Bank rider surprisingly Bjatz no wins at all this year for him he's had again a little bit of an up and a down season and he's now hoping to make amends with a result here in the Tour of Lombardy the 94th edition by the way of a race which is one of Italy's magical events all of the big names of world cycling like to put the name on this trophy as far as the Irish are concerned that's Sean Kelly and that we've got many many names who've won this race and usually only the good ones Eddie Merckx included of course sitting on the back Cordell from the Lamprey squad he's had a pretty good season so far but as you say he just got his first win not too long ago Testa della Corsa means the head of the bike race and that is certainly where Michele Bartoli in the Italian national championships wants to be he's had a great season coming back from a very dramatic crash back in 1999 in the Tour of Germany as they weave through this magnificent ravine here they will in the back of their minds be thinking about that final climb of the day though Phil because that is a serious launch pad for victory if you can just hold back a little bit and have enough energy that is the ideal place to launch an attack Casagrande looking pretty cool talking about Massimo Codol there uh, he got his first win this year when we were out on holiday on holiday we were working in uh, in the spring classics sat in a hotel with Robbie Hunter his teammate there's the gap 65 seconds and uh, the news came in from Spain that Codol had won the stage in the pay basque and uh, the whole team were on a high after that because uh, he'd never won a race before 105 so the gap certainly starting to go out the, the moment 
looks very much as if the winner of the Giro di Lombardia will come from this group. This is Beatsberg, the elder brother of Marcus Berg, the, the Swiss national champion. So Rabobank have got a representative in this leading group at the moment. There's only one rider from Mape, and that's quite a rare situation, Phil, in a World Cup race like this. When you see Faso Bortolo have got two riders up here, Vladimiro Belli and Raimundus Rumsas. Those are the two riders in white. And slipping to the back, Beatzeberg in the orange of Rabobank. Yes, you're right, especially when we're racing in Italy, of course. In Mape, only one man, but they've got their best man here. Some would say not all of these riders have had wins. Rumsas hasn't won this year. Zeberg hasn't won. Axelsen hasn't won. Francesco Casagrande's had five victories. Stangley's had four. Well, it's not too much of a problem really for the Mape squad because they will run out the overall winners of the team classification at the World Cup anyway, whatever the result uh, is of the Tour of Lombardy. But for Michele Bartoli, he would love to get a victory here in the Giro di, Lo di Lombardia with the Italian national jersey on his shoulders. This is Rumsas, a rider who we've seen ri racing quite often around the world in the Commonwealth Bank Cycle Classic, for example, a, a race where he's gone with the Moroz team for the last couple of seasons. He's always performed pretty well at the Peace Race. In fact, he won two stages back in 1998, and last year he was the national time trial champion of Poland. Stangelai there on the front in the, the black jersey of Liquid Gas. He has a teammate in this move at the moment as well. And David Rebellin has certainly had a pretty good end of the season so far. Rumzas is a rider with great potential, there's no doubt about that. And he's got his hands full today though with the Italians on the home ground. And two great ones here, Casagrande and Bartoli all looking for the fine end of the season Rebelin doesn't seem to always have his own way with the Italian selectors he's also looking for a good win now well he was selected for the World Row Race Championships in Plouay just a week ago but I think still stinging a little bit Phil by the inclusion of Marco Pantani into the Olympic team for the road race in Sydney surprising this is Sergio Parsani driving the team car there a former stage winner at the Tour de France back in the days when I used to race so he's probably getting on a bit I don't say how old he is actually <laughs> there's the complete breakdown of the breakaway they're showing Balducci in there as well but he's not there now he's gone he was part of the original group uh, but he's been dropped by the climb a little while back now but there's nine riders left here and this one at the front is Rumzas his teammate Belli coming through then Axelsen looking pretty cool he's got Bartoli on his wheel and behind Bartoli picking a good man to follow is Francesco Casagrande well for the moment there's no sign of emotion on any of these riders faces they all look pretty calm they know that there's still a couple of pretty tough climbs to go before the finish Belly leaving a gap there and forcing his own teammate to come across the gap Rums has Francesco Casagrande huge chairing there trying to encourage the other riders in this group to to come forward and I think there's a little bit of reticence Phil because they they do have a one minute advantage over the rest and there's nobody actually on the front of that main field organizing the chase right now so these riders I think are trying to hold back just a little bit to maybe try and launch an attack later on and split the group from this nine-man group into a smaller more manageable group well, looking at the leaders here just uh, looking back through last year's results three more riders made the start than this year 169 but only 57 of them got through to the finish and in second place Danilo De Luca and if you're watching the world championships De Luca has really flowered this year and had uh, part of being part of that long breakaway in the world championships in Plouay. Bartoli by the way won the Grand Prix Plouay this year which was the same course as the World Road Race Championship so he knew what he was going into there we have to be content with fourth place those nine riders moving away from us heading towards uh, what they know will be the most important part of this bike race right now they still have a pretty severe advantage over the rest and I think Phil we're looking at 
the major decision already being made here at the Tour of Lombardy. I think it's made at this time of the year. We know that Zabel has retired. Uh, Schmil has not got across to these nine, nor is he showing signs of getting across, although he is in the group that's about a minute behind. So if he did get across, he'd have to win the race. In fact, it's a minute 30 now, and we're some 40 kilometers from the finish. That's a tough call now for Schmil, and I'm sure that Eric Zabel isn't losing any sleep as he gets uh, driven down to the finish at Bergamo. Well, Eric Zabel's probably in the hotel not too far from the finish line here in Bergamo, watching this on TV right now. This is not the kind of course that Eric Zabel would have liked. He's much more of a... a a, a northern classics rider, rider who's performed this year very well in races like Paris-Roubaix and the Tour of Flanders, but certainly his best race in Italy is the Milan-San Remo, which he's taken out three times in the last four years. Yes, a race he just loves. And uh, looking down at Bartoli now, on the front there with Bietzberg, the Rabobank man. These riders, they do appear not to be putting their backs into this breakaway, yet the time is going up. Bartoli looking over his shoulder, seeing if anybody else is going to help him out. Ramzas goes through. Francesco Casagrande will be looking for a lone win, I think, an attack on one of these final climbs. A great attack by him just a week ago in the World Championships. It looked very much as if he timed it to perfection over the closing kilometres there. But strangely enough, Phil, it, it was a very strange race which kept coming back together. And now this race here, very much the, the final race of the season for many of these riders. And the winner of the Tour of Lombardy must certainly come from this leading group of nine. Faso Bortolo in a good situation here with two riders. Rumsas, fresh off fifth overall in the Tour of Spain. And Vladimir Obelli, although obelli has got his hand up right now, I think that might be for a drink. And that's time for this man, Nicholas Axelsson, to launch an attack. The least known of all of the riders in this group. And it may well be that they won't react right now, Phil, because uh, they don't know too much about this rider. And the other guys in the group will start to ma match each other. Well, one rider trying to get clear of the field and nobody reacting at the minute. Belly, by the way, shows us this year, even at 30, he's still a good rider. And this, in fact, is Axelsson, most unlikely man to go clear of the field. Has never won a race and he's going to give it a bit of a dig here. And Axelsson has gone clear, I reckon, about 30 kilometres to go big strong bike rider I'm surprised to see him still very much to the front but he has ridden highly in the overall standings at the Giro d'Italia and that's why he was able to accompany that very select leading group of what was nine riders over the big mountain passes so far this is the moment when he moved clear and you can see he took them all as they were napping Vladimir Obelli was just going to the back there to talk with his team car and nobody reacted at all to that attack by Axelsson who very smartly opened himself up an advantage of around about 100 meters there's the main field or the group I should say behind him they're around about 200 meters and for the moment nobody's chasing that's a pretty serious effort by this man his arm warm is still on from a chilly start to the autumnal day here in Italy but now Nicholas Axelsson has gone clear Paneria rider, he rides the Italians he's gone at some 28 kilometers to go to the finish maybe slightly more than that, there's the attack we finally found it as he gets clear of the field good way to attack, good clean, fast move and you're gone he's the sort of man with the big names back there like Bartoli and uh, uh, Belli and, uh, and Casagrande they're not going to react to Axelsson just now after all he's never won a bike race but he's got himself 15 seconds good start well if he can start to build on that advantage Phil if he could build it up to the one minute mark this may well be the big surprise of the end of the season he's a very strong bike rider we've seen him ride high in the overall standings of one or two major stage races and the fact is behind in the group there's no real possibility of cohesion maybe the teams who need to come forward are the teams of Faso Bortolo they've got two riders in the group and the liquid gas team of David Rebellin Rebellin and Goraz Stangelai are there so they should start to organize the chase but they're leaving all of the work just looking there on the front of the group to the man Francesco Casagrande so he won't be too happy with that well this is a pretty tough steady climb here as we climb up along the river Axelsson is clear and uh, getting on with the job in hand as we go through these beautiful little towns we're heading down to um, Bergamo there's still a climb towards the end which could hurt Axelsson or could help him if he's feeling strong he's certainly riding with determination best place in the 99 Giro he finished 6th overall and almost an anonymous 6th as well 
has nobody really seen him but he kept on plugging away very consistent and took sixth place very concentrated right now as he tries to build on his advantage uh, the, the group behind there the white jersey that looks like Vladimiro Belli who's on the front but it's very often on the front of that group being left up to Francesco Casagrande he's the man I think has got the biggest chance of getting clear on the final climb of the day which will take the riders to within four kilometers of the, of the finish in Bergamo well let's have a look back now Nicholas Axelsson of Sweden of all countries they've turned out one or two good riders over the years as we look down the curls of this road here and this slope has been to the advantage of Axelsson because look at this now we could be witnessing a surprise finish to the season 45 seconds the gap well, if we can bring it up to the one minute mark that would be good for him you can see there's no major reaction right now and there still is an awful long way to go to the finish I think what is happening here is because there are so many Italian riders in this group Phil in fact they're they're all Italians apart from Beat, uh, Beat Zaberg they're actually matching each other out of this event well don't forget the Lithuanian Rumzas but uh, even so you're right this is largely an Italian setup and we've got Axelsson now an Italian team rider anyway and Panario would really love him if he could get land a big win for this small team here in Italy and he's going very very well at the minute there's no organization behind there's a few people taking gambles back there here's the good news he's approaching one minute the advantage well, as soon as the team car comes across that means the gap is pretty close to the one minute mark on the front of the group there is one of the riders from Liki Gas and that is probably David Rebellin in second position is Vladimir Obelli there's Francesco Casagrande and Michele Bartoli Bartoli and Francesco Casagrande pretty much isolated in this group because in fact the other two teams have got two team members present and those are the teams who I think should really come to the front and try and organize the chase behind Axelsson but you see how Bartoli keeps looking over his shoulder he's waiting for somebody else to do the work today and he's very rarely in a situation like this where he's isolated at the front of a World Cup race because normally you would expect two or three Mape riders to have made a split like this all of the teams leaders here 121, 221, 81 and 141 their ones indicating they lead their respective teams and they're the first four riders and they're chasing the team leader of Panaria actually because he's number 171 Rebellin on the front looking over his shoulder waiting for some help to come the road now leveling off somewhat these riders now have a chance to get themselves organized and try and eat into that advantage but if they don't start to put the hammer down soon I would say that man is going to start to build on the advantage that he had which at one time went over the one minute mark into the province now of Bergamo riders continuing to cruise towards the finish one small official climb there's plenty of these little slopes any of you have ridden in Italy just for the fun of it knows that down in this part of Lombardia the roads are continually going up they're usually good surfaces but the long steady climbs and you can keep a good tempo on them and I think that's where Axelsson is benefiting now we still have that climb to come just four kilometers from the end of the race he needs a minute I think to get away on that climb Vladimir Obelli taking up the chase it looks as if there's a, a couple of riders have gone missing from this group right now that is David Rebellin but I didn't see the other black jersey of Goraz Stangeli I think he may well have been left behind because of that slight acceleration just a few moments ago and the other man I haven't seen is Kodal so I'm wondering if he's been dropped as well but back up with the leader he's over the top of that little drag back into the big gears hugging the stone walls so many of them here in Italy rather nasty if you clip them on the way down as we've seen happen in bike races as he's using all of the road on the descent we've got five riders there one in the lead is six we've got two absentees and I think it is Stangeli and Kodal yeah, Stangeli was uh, riding very well at the latter part of this season rode a very good world championships and I think maybe like many of these riders now Phil just at the end of a very long season really looking towards a, a brief respite before they start training again for next year and when you think that a man like Eric Zar will start training in November well that's only just around the corner yes indeed it is and the end of what has been a very very long season for the bike riders this year from the tour down under in Australia to the Olympic Games back in Australia to the World Championships in France now to the uh, race of the falling leaves here in Lombardy 
and these riders just looking for their own way down the climb as they twist and turn they're going to have to organize something specially they're not riding even as one unit here they're just not pulling it together at all and if they keep a lack of cohesion like this then Axelsson might suddenly be waking up tomorrow morning as winner of the Tour of Lombardia and that would be a turn up well that's the way it looks right now in this group of five riders one rider at a time is coming forward and this is a Michele Bartoli who in fact is trying to reintegrate the group as well he too is not having a super day here at the Giro de Lombardia he's taking a few risks around this corner here because he wants to reintegrate that group of five riders there and he was another rider Phil who must have been missing after that acceleration just a few kilometers ago well he's putting matters to right champions don't like being left behind and perhaps his pride getting him back on rather than legs uh, but he too feeling the fatigue of the year which has been up and down for him trying to recover from that knee injury which was a very very serious injury in the tour of germany last year and he's missing out on the spring classic so bartoli taking a few chances on the way down the champion of italy rejoining the chase just very difficult start of the season to him as well psychologically he thought he was in super form when he came to Milan San Remo he looked like the Michele Bartoli of the previous year but then when he came to the Tour of Flanders up in the northern part of Europe he had a very hard time racing and I think psychologically he had to go away and get himself right again he missed Liege Baston Liege which went to his teammate Paolo Bettini and then after that he seemed to come good just before the Tour de France because that's when he took out his Italian national title and then in the Tour I think he got better as the days went on because certainly the way he rode on some of the mountain passes indicates what Giancarlo Ferretti believes that this man can be a serious challenger for the overall win at the Tour de France yes because we only ever think about him as a single day rider here he comes back up to this chase group now we've got uh, three so there will be six of them so we've still got those two back behind Kodol and Stangeli I'm surprised we got rid of Stangeli Kodol perhaps we would have expected it's been a tough chase back this by Bartoli he's not going to give up though till he makes it the lead has gone through here now we're seeing the chase group go through and he's just about on but he's going to have to take one or two more chances first well, he hasn't made it quite yet but he's had a very hard chase to get onto the back of that group and you can see every time the, the road straightens out he accelerates to maximum speed just to try and close down that final 20 or 30 meters you can see just how fast these riders are going by the fact that a man of the caliber of the Michele Bartoli just cannot quite make the junction Look like Graham Watson, the photographer, found himself a little corner there for the shots as the riders came winging round. Well, I wonder if he uh, took the picture of Bartoli because here he comes, the champion of Italy. Bit of a chase, embarrassment is over, he's back on. The gap is 32 seconds now. So they pulled it back a little bit here with 20 kilometres from the finish and the gap has come down. I'm surprised it's come down because I really thought that uh, Axelson was going away. Well, it's come down from a minute and five seconds to 32 seconds now and I think the fact that a man like Michele Bartoli is having such a hard time getting onto the back of that group just indicates that in fact although it doesn't look quite so hard in that group right now they must be going fairly seriously this is the leader now Nicholas Axelson he has to take a lot of risks on this corner to try and hold on to as much of his advantage as possible the amazing thing about these descents though Phil here and these little laces as they call them you can look up the mountain and see just what your advantage is and I'm pretty sure that that is what Nicholas Axelson is doing right now 28 years of age Axelson and hasn't won a race since he turned pro in 1997 he's knocking on the door of a great win here because these riders have not got control of him yet he still looks as though he's riding strongly they're into the trees so we can't go there with the cameras there they are again now these hairpin bends which are disrupting the chase pattern all of the time the riders having to wait break and sprint out of the corners they can't get the rhythm Bartoli just uh, dangling off the back there quite unhappy about his race so far I think here he is well, it's been a long season for him but at least he has proved that he's come back after that dramatic crash in the Tour of Germany to be competitive once again there was a moment there when they thought he may well not be able to ride a bike again his kneecap was smashed into about six pieces and had to be put together with wire and he was actually off the bike for around about three months he's now pulled himself back into the fold here six riders chasing one lone leader and it's a very technical run into the finish line here in the Tour of Lombardia as you can see 
a little bit further down the slopes there there is the sign of Axelson just going around the corner and it is still around about the 32nd mark for this young man and if they don't organize themselves and really chase in earnest he may well pull off the big surprise because he as you can see now Phil is taking unbelievable risks on this very tricky and technical descent well looking at the trees here you wouldn't think it was so late into the year because you've had so much rain all over Europe especially in Italy which they have been absolutely tragic the floods in northern Italy and the trees here are struggling to even die off for the, the end of the summer Axelson not taking too much notice of the scenery as he charges down yet another downhill bound uh, remorsefully for the climb the last climb of the day in which he hopes he'll get about a minute on there otherwise I think he'll get caught just looking at that gap there, Phil, I would say that is much more than 30 seconds. I think he may well have stretched out his advantage again to closer to the 40-second mark. And if he can get to the foot of that final climb with a minute, then I think we may well see the name of Nicholas Axelson on the top of the podium here into the Tour of Lombardy. Stefa uh, Francesco Casagrande was the man on the front of the bunch trying to stir it up there and get the others to come forward. I think there's a lot of infighting going on here. The riders don't want to finish off the rider in front because they know the attacks will surely come. I don't think any of them, quite honestly, have got their legs. They're all struggling. They've got the end of season blues and this rider is trying to take advantage of that. I should imagine his Panaria team manager is getting pretty excited because I think he will now begin to sense a possible winner here in the Tour of Lombardy. Actually, the team manager will be really getting pretty nervous right now because if they could win this, it would be huge for Panaria as we go through the tunnel there. Up the road, Nicholas Axelson is just hoping to build onto his advantage. And I think on these long stretches, Phil, that is where he is disadvantaged because these riders are starting to take turns at the front of the group now, organizing themselves, picking up the pace to ex in excess of 45 kilometers an hour. That was David Ribelin then stirring it up on the front. But the advantage this man has is he's riding on his own and he can pick his own pace. And I reckon everybody is pretty nailed. And there you are, it has gone up to the 42nd mark. So he's nibbled it out just a little bit, but every second could be crucial here. As he just concentrates, there's the six riders with the arrival back of Bartoli. We've now lost for sure Massimo Codol and the Gerosh Stanley. They've both been dropped. Bartoli's face doesn't look bad, but he must have hurt himself to get back. He just about got on before the train went. The drivers here now is Zeberg and Rebelin. Casagrande occasionally. There he is. I think Michele Bartoli has come back here, Phil, on absolute sheer pride. He's the Italian national champion. He's the man who was taken to the World Championships as the number one leader, and he doesn't want to see himself getting left on the roadside. Davide Rebelin's acceleration here has taken him five or ten meters off the front of the pack. He needs to hold back a little bit, just work carefully with the group if they're going to pull back Nicholas Axelson, and they're going to have to do something pretty special because this guy is looking very good right now, very strong, no signs of weakness at all in his pedaling action he's just concentrated on the job in hand and that is trying to build himself up a one minute advantage over the rest and if he can do that they won't see him again well it's beginning to hurt now but it should do at the end of a world cup classic that's bringing the world cup series to an end been a very good world cup series this year too hard fought all of the way and a lot of variance in the winners there's no doubt if this group stays away and i think it will now Andre Schmil will not defend his World Cup, but what a great run he made over the closing races. And he'll finish in second place, having won it a year ago. And Zabel, who hasn't go or isn't going to finish this race, uh, climbing off his bike at only 25 kilometers today. He'll be at the finish now, waiting to receive his trophy and also his final World Cup leader's jersey. Looking down on the six again, there's no serious organization in that group. And again, I've made that time check very much more than the 40-second mark. So it may well be that the tide is turning for Nicholas Axelson, and he will be approaching that one-minute mark again. Very strange, though, because he did at one stage have a minute and five-second advantage over the group. It came down to just 30 seconds, and now he's turning the tables once more and stretching it out again. Vladimiro Belli is 81. He's sitting on the back. He's had a fantastic season this year. And so has his teammate there, Raimundas Rumsas, fifth overall in the Tour of Spain, and he was always present in the big mountain passes. 
Well, we're hearing now, in fact, that the main peloton, what's left of it, containing Schmill, is in excess of three minutes back, and that means they won't be coming back today. So I think we can safely say that Zabel is the winner of the World Cup, Paul, and deservedly so. But what a good competition it's been. Absolutely magnificent. It looked as if it was going to be a boring competition after uh, Eric Zabel took the win in the Amstel Gold Race. And it looked as if he had an indomitable position. He looked as if he would never be caught again. But it is a strange system, the way the World Cup is organised. And it's always possible in the latter part of the season to come back and take the overall win. And that is just exactly when André Schmiel came back with that fantastic second place in the San Sebastian Classic. Casa Grande takes a drink. The pace now visibly quicker, although we're on a uh, shallow, one of these shallow descents at the moment. As they continue, Rumzast has done his turn, slips away to the back. Zeberg is the rider on the front now. Bartoli obviously had a few deep breaths and has recovered from that chase. Now content to work here in this chase group. They've nothing to fear from behind now. Time is running out for the rest of the riders and also for these riders to catch up with the leader if it's going to happen there's another little flurry of riding being done at the front as the bird caught napping Bartley looking to see where he's gone and then they're picking up the pace to get on the back of the chain incredible style of Michele Bartley gets so low over the front end of that machine there as he accelerates to, to get onto the tail of the rider in front of him he's very stylish on that machine of his and I think he was very ha happy to take out that win the Italian national championships but they must start to worry somewhat soon by the performance of Nicholas Axelson and once again we've got that little picture breakup that's because of the live link up from the motorbike to the helicopter down here to the finish line in Bergamo it is not easy to put a race together in these conditions moving all of the time along through the roads of northern Italy the Lombardy area where huge numbers of cyclists come and ride on Saturdays and Sundays and certainly not many of them ride at the speed that these guys are going right now they're in excess of 45 kilometers an hour and their deficit is still hovering at 40 seconds from the man Nicholas Axelson who's gone out and taken a lone lead they won't have given up hope yet of catching him because if they can hold him at 40 seconds that last little climb before the end is going to hurt and could well be the springboard for victory and I think they know that, the experience is telling them that this rider though is giving 110% now, he doesn't look round he's just got to go as long as he can, surely if he gets caught it'll be all over but he's not that far to go well they seem to be really picking up in earnest now Phil in this group behind because the moves at the front are longer and more sustained than they have been over the last few kilometres I think they realise the urgency and the fact is that final little ramp of the day is getting closer and closer and that is seriously where anybody who wants to win this bike race is going to have to look at making their move and try and split away from that group there is Axelson coming across the river and not too far behind now we have the group of six riders Villa Dalme is the town where he is right now <laughs> he's looking across at the camera there hoping for some kind of encouragement his face is a picture of agony right now as he really rides the toughest individual time trial of his life there are the six chasers right now going over the same river so it's still hovering between 30 and 40 seconds he needs to stretch it out to a minute it's a big gap he's already gone there's a lot of ground to be made up here there's the composition of the chase group but the uh, man at the top is a Swedish rider Niklas Axelsson there's the chase group led by Zeberg over the bridge and the gap is now almost 45 seconds 45 seconds it's sounds like a lot but on that final climb of the day that can all get wiped away with the acceleration of a man like Francesco Casagrande Casagrande I reckon is in good form at the end of this season he was able to prepare himself for the Giro d'Italia have a break during the, the Tour de France season that most of the other riders took part in and then build himself slowly up to the end of the year where he hoped he would get himself either an Olympic medal or a World Championships medal he nearly did that just a week ago so obviously the form is there and it's on a ramp like this one where a man like Francesco Casagrande has got a chance of blowing away the rest well the blackboard man showing him the time gaps then unfortunately we didn't get close enough to see them but at least Axelson will know the gap and we can have a little look at the relationship as we pull back it is a fair way that with not so far to go I think we're only about 15 kilometers from the finish here Michele Bartoli 
Still looks pretty fluid, but I don't think he's the man to attack on that final climb of the day. I would look more to an attack coming from Francesco Casagrande on the far side in the, the pale blue jersey of Vinnie Calderillo. Belli, Rumsas, Rebellin, Bartoli, Zeberg and Casagrande. This is Rebellin in the black jersey of Liki Gas. Smarting somewhat from not getting picked at the Olympic Games because he felt that he had a right to be selected for a one-day race and his career has been really made on one-day races and I, I really do wonder at the intelligence of the Italians going to a circuit like the one in Sydney to take a man like Marco Pantani who really didn't do very much after the Tour de France and I would have forced him to ride one or two selection races before taking him all the way to the Southern Hemisphere. A people's decision I think, the ever popular Marco who did promise he would do well and then did admit afterwards it wasn't his circuit uh, but it's no good afterwards is it when you've got a rider right like rebel in uh, sitting in the winds even so David only had one win this year uh, but he came really to the top of his form in the Giro d'Italia when he got the pink jersey for six days uh, back in 1996 that gap starting to come down there, Phil, 38 seconds, but it's not coming down fast enough right now. The two riders from Faso Bortolo riding pretty close together, that's so they can communicate, so they're still the team with the tactical advantage right now. They've got two men who can work together, so if the attacks do start to come later on, at least each man can cover an, a different move. The one-two won't surprise them. The second group on the road is a minute and 10 seconds behind this group so that puts them two minutes behind the man at the front of the bike race Nicholas Axelson. Casa Grande following the wheel of Belli in turn following the wheel of Rebelin. David Rebelin now 29 years of age just turned that in August this year no oh, he's a Leo just two days before my birthday Vladimir Belli looking pretty comfortable on the back there but they're going to have to really pull something out, Phil, to catch this man. There he is, Nicholas Axelson. Sixth place overall in the Giro d'Italia is the best performance that he has to his credit. But he's the kind of rider who, at the moment, is not showing any sign of weakness. And I think now, for the first time, that gap has come inside the 30-second mark because you can see the speed is completely different here. Now, these riders realize you can't throw away something like the Giro di Lombardia. This is a very important classic, and especially for the Italians. They may well have put down their... Uh, the rivalries for the moment have decided to try and pull this man back into the fold. On the front, it's Vladimir Obelli taking over Beat Zaberg. This is the best performance Beat Zaberg has had in quite a few years. We've been used to seeing his mother, Marcus, riding well at the front of the pack. But uh, Zaberg has made the front split today. And uh, he could come up with a surprise if it comes down to a sprint at the end. But this man is hanging on, and we're all beginning to wish now he makes it to the finish again. The relationship from the helicopter, it is still a long way, but it looks closer to me. It's inside 30 seconds, I would say. Bert Zerberg in this group in the orange jersey, he's been a professional since 1992. He's getting very close to 30 years of age. He's had 25 wins as a professional, but in fact he had a very nasty crash earlier on this season when he broke his uh, pelvis in the Tour of the Pay Basque and he fought his way back and that's probably why he's finding himself some late season form 42 seconds I can't believe that because looking at that shot we had from the helicopter a few moments ago it looked to me as if it was well inside of 30 well we're 12 kilometers now from the finish for the leader he might be about 11 actually 12 for this chase bunch 42 seconds the gap and Nicholas Axelsson might well be dreaming now of becoming another winner of the Tour of Lombardia, which started in 1905 and has never had a Swedish winner. These long straight roads are not good for him though, Phil, because that's when the group behind gets themselves organised. That's when they take short turns of 100 or 150 metres on the front, keeping the pace just that little bit higher. 42 seconds is the time on the board there, indicating his advantage over the chasing group of six. But if we pull back and just have a look there, I would say it's inside of that because that group really has turned on the speed. They still are an awful long way behind, but in these long straights now, they will be able to see the armada of cars behind him, and that will spur them on as they get closer to the final climb of the day. Yes, and they're not far away from it either now. Just about five kilometres to the colour of Puerto. Here he comes, his face a picture of pain, but what seemed like a daring move is now developing into a possible race winning one here. 
he is giving it just about everything he has got now a rider who's finished six in the Giro d'Italia and to do that means he's a reasonable time to our rider and he's having to call on all of that ability right now so Berg is the man on the front but the acceleration there coming from Vladimir Obelli going forward and so Berg Phil is going to have a hard time getting onto the back wheel there that he's got caught out by that acceleration there and so has Dev David Rebellin and Francesco Casagrande you can see now the legs are starting to get tired in this group and that acceleration from Belli dragged Michele Bartoli away as well as his own teammate Rumsas Rebellin has recovered and made the contact but that's why at the end of a bike race like this you must always be attentive because if the gap goes Goes, you can find yourself out in the middle of nowhere. Well, somehow Zaberg has found his way back there without the help of Casagrande, who gambled, but Rebelin just pedaled across that gap without any problem whatsoever. He's on the back wheel of uh, Belly, and behind is Rumzas, I think. These guys are now getting just a little bit frisky and if they start attacking one at a time like this, this is going to be good for Nicholas Axelsson. The only way I think they can pull him back is actually by organising the chase. This is the move here, quite a clever little move by Vladimir Obelli and what happened was the man who should have gone onto the wheel there should have been David Rebellin. Well, back to live action, another attack has gone and Bartoli is going to have to try and get across to it. Casagrande fields it and I think it's the two uh, Fasa Batala railways, one of them, and it's Rumzas who's gone because this is Belly. So Rumzas and Bietzerberg. Bietzerberg is the one, he's the one who's putting the hammer down in the orange jersey at the front there. Getting he's his own got back. the man from Latvia trying to get across there, Raimundus Rumzas. He raced for a Polish team for many years, but he's made the junction at the front with Bert Zerberg. And just coming across, whew, that was pretty quick. That's Francesco Casagrande and Michele Bartoli. Uh, all they have succeeded in doing right now is get rid of, getting rid of two riders. But the fact that they're attacking and slowing down like this, Phil, will be good for Nicholas Axelsson. The gap is holding. We're still getting time checks of 34 seconds, 35 seconds all the time and uh, they'll have lost a bit of heart on this long straight road because they didn't see him which is good news for him he got round there there's a signboard coming up which I think is kilometers to go you may not see it actually but the attack through on the inside now and that, that looks like Rumzas has gone another attack these guys now by attacking like this to split the group is going to play into the hands of Nicholas Axelsson because what seems to be happening is we're getting a succession of an attacks but then the riders are slowing down and waiting for the next attack so their average speed is actually coming down to below the 45 kilometers an hour mark and what's happening in the front is Nicholas Axelsson is riding at a steady speed all of the time and maintaining most of his advantage which is still hovering at the 30 second mark it's not going up anymore at all but for him the advantage is it's not coming down. If there wasn't a hill on this course towards the end I'd say we could take our hats off to the Swedish rider he'll do it but I'm not sure yet because these two are still counting the move. Well I'm not sure yet either because that car you just saw whizzing through there was the neutral service vehicle and once they start to pull the neutral service vehicle down it means the gap has gone inside the 30 second mark. The team car from Panaria is no longer in there either and it looks now as if we come into the outskirts of Bergamo that we are soon going to have this group of six riders reforming behind Nicholas Axelsson. Well, I'm pretty sure the Simon Shaw said six kilometres to go, which is quite likely, which means we're about a kilometre from the actual climb. It is a nasty little climb, I can tell you that, and there at six kilometres to go, it's officially 32 seconds the gap. Well, it's going to be touch and go tell you one thing 32 seconds is not very much because when he does turn onto that final climb it's going to be like a brick in the face for him he's going to hit that very hard as they swing off now they will be right on the slopes of that very difficult tricky climb there and this is where we should see an attack coming if Francesco Casagrande has got good legs today this is where he's going to attack now let's see if he does because the climb kicks a little bit as he gets started and this is the move coming on that Bartley certainly not looking for it He's not very interested at all. In fact, Casagrande's third wheel. Five kilometers to go. The summit of the climb is four kilometers to the finish. There's a move, and in fact, it's coming from Zaberg. It's matched there by, it looks like Rumzas has gone across there right now. Well, I'm surprised Zaberg's got the legs. He obviously just made a mistake and got caught out when he got split away. 34 seconds, he's knocked up two seconds there. So he's still very much in the frame for victory, Nicholas Axelsson and the Panaria team car won't believe it 
Rumsas looking over his shoulders to see if anybody's coming back this time. He's come up alongside Zaberg, who was the man who instigated the attack, but now seems to be suffering somewhat in that group behind. I think what's happening is the Italians are starting to mark each other again. Rebellin and Casagrande are the two strongest riders, and they cannot wait too long as this man gets to the worst part of the climb. When your legs are aching, why not throw in a few cobblestones as well? Well, this is such a cruel approach into this beautiful old city. We're now up into the old town here. We'll dive down from it to finish. Uh, but this really is a cruel sting in the tail. Axel Sun is now on the cobblestones. The gap, let's call it 30 seconds. It's no more than that now. Can he hang on? Oh, I don't know. He's really suffering. You can see, having ridden so long and hard on the flat, he's had to change to the wrong, the wrong end of the cluster now, keeping the gears very low. He's on the inside chain ring. He's just got to try and keep the rhythm as he goes over the summit that's going to be a relief now he's off the cobblestones but the attacks are coming thick and fast behind if he can just get through the tunnel at the top end of this town he'll find a nice plunge down to the finish line in Bergamo nobody cleared the group there that was the Berg first through still six men came under the archway as they enter the old town of Bergamo four kilometers to go now he is almost home this has got to be the last effort here and Castagrande is near his camera on the front well that uh, little attack there by Rumsas and Zaberg has been brought back into the fold and again it's still six riders chasing the one lone leader he's trying to find the smoothest part of the row right here and he's trying to get himself to the summit of this climb for the final time and it is really hurting the reaction now on the front is coming from Francesco Casagrande but his deficit is still 30 seconds on the man at the front 30 seconds four kilometers to go for belly who has now lost contact with that group so vladimir belly will be set to finish in sixth or seventh place well, belly has ridden well there's two riders going off the front that is francesco casagrande and that's rumzas who is with him rebelin and marco and michele bartoli are here in the group behind they're trying to pull themselves forward and i think really phil for bert zaberg it's a question of survival to the summit it's a question of survival too for Axelson. He is so close to pulling off this big victory now. And there's two riders trying to get a clear now. And it is Casagrande doing all of the chasing on his favourite terrain. I'd love to see the gear he's riding. And he's giving uh, a lot of pain there to Rumzas. This is behind Casagrande and Rumzas. You've got Rebelin and Bartoli about to dispatch uh, Bietzeberg. Already gone down the slopes is Belly. Well, that's where we expected Francesco Casagrande to attack. He's putting Rumzas into difficulty now. Rumzas is all over that machine, trying to stay with the man who is the master of attacking on the climb. We saw him attack in the Giro d'Italia when he wanted to take the Maglia Rosa, and nobody could follow him at all at the moment. That white jersey is Raimundus Rumzas. He's actually beginning to break, and I think, you know, Francesco Casagrande has managed to get free, and he's now going to be the lone chaser behind this man. But this man, Phil, is still holding on to the main major part of his 30 second advantage it's not a lot but it's downhill now to the finishing line there goes Casagrande and he's free as a bird to chase him down it is going to have to supreme effort now to pick up Axelson on the running we've got one winner today that'll be the World Cup rider Eric Zabel the new World Cup holder but who is going to win the Tour of Lombardy in its 94th edition and Casagrande is gritting his teeth now as he charges down and Rumzas is still after him well Rumzas hasn't given up I thought he'd got blown away completely there but there he's got in his sights Francesco Casagrande it's almost like a greyhound chasing a rabbit here at the moment but the rabbit's name is Francesco Casagrande they are all going to take a lot of risks on this very tricky descent and there in fact is Axelson he's not very far in front at all the race referees are clearing all of the motorbikes out of the gap to try and keep it as clean as possible 10 seconds it has plummeted 10 little seconds for this rider who broke away 28 kilometers to go and built a lead that never got more than 42 43 seconds and now making this deem a descent Francesco Casagrande is about to be joined by Ramondas Rumzas the Lithuanian well what a season they are having over in that part of the world now a Latvian wins the world title a Lithuanian has latched on to Casagrande and the leader of the race is just around that corner well this is going to be oh so very close the problem for Nicholas Axelson is he's been at the front of this bike race for around about 20 seconds and that final climb there really will have hurt his legs the tricky approach into the finish line here will also not be in his favor because he needs to accelerate out of all of these corners it's a very technical approach to the old part of Bergamo to get to the finish line and they will now have him in their sights 10 seconds is not very far at all 
but a superb piece of riding by Axelson he has not looked back he has driven on it must seem like an eternity these last few kilometers of the Tour of Lombardy Casagrande appears to be receiving no help whatsoever from Rumsas who is now sitting behind him but he's not a teammate of this rider in the lead it is still possible that Axelson will win this race there is the kilometer to go now this is going to be some finish it's going to be very close indeed he's got a few more technical corners to get himself around there 1000 meters is all he requires to win the, the Giro di Lombardia around the corner now there's one more very tricky bend at the end of this long straight and looking back there we can see the two chases all of the work as you said Phil is being done by Francesco Casagrande and Rumsas is having a hard time just staying in his slipstream but they've closed it down it's less than five seconds they're going to be on him now they're going to catch him in the last 500 meters and that is very very sad indeed Rumsas has done nothing to aid Casagrande he's waiting here there could be a surprise winner of the Giro de Lombardia after all because just look at this as the finishing line approaches now Axelson is about to be caught by Casagrande who's taken a quick breather Rumsas will still not help out as we're running up to towards the line now Casagrande goes over uh, the poor hapless Axelson round the final bend well that is a tragedy in sporting terms because Axelson had that race won if only he could have come down that hill much quicker and not surprisingly now Rumsas is going to thank Casagrande for the hard work because he is going to win the Tour of Lombardia the first man from Lithuania to do that look at that coming across in third place a big bang of the handlebars for Nicholas Axelson what a great performance by him but this is the moment when the junction was made Bartoli uh, Casagrande right on the wheel there Rumsas following him around that corner stuck to his back wheel like a limpet forcing the Italian to lead out the sprint but this man is a very experienced bike rider you know Rumsas in 1999 came away with 13 victories and once he saw that winning line he just accelerated by no chance at all first win for Lithuania in the Giro di Lombardia he took it well Casagrande is only himself to blame he should have made the other riders share the pace but uh, he's a good sprinter anyway Rumsas probably quicker than Casagrande at the best of times and certainly when you get led out for the last four kilometers and then I guess you always are going to win the sprint and the third rider in you have to feel dreadfully sorry for him because Nicholas Axelson really was the moral winner of the Tour of Lombardy but a race is never won till the first man home of course so the old town of Bergamo has witnessed the 94th Tour of Lombardy bringing to an end a great cycling season this year and a man who didn't finish this race finishes the season as winner of the World Cup Eric Zabel who often runs in parallel with his famous teammate Jan Ulrich uh, who won the Olympic road race in Sydney Zabel gets the World Cup to defend next year and it really was an excellent season for him as well which started way back in January in the tour down under where he won a stage of that race too look at the face of Casagrande day thinking what might have been i hope you've enjoyed what has been an extraordinarily good cycling season this year we'll take a break now for the winter join us again with world cycling productions next year for paul sherwin i'm phil liggett saying goodbye from bergamo